Hi there and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to have a look at the new Sonoff water leak sensor. But first before we get into it, uh, let's find out how you can get 10% off any Sonoff products on their website. So remember, if you want to purchase one of these from the ITAD or ITEAD.cc uh, website, which is Sonoff's own website, you can get a discount if you use my code shown now on the bottom of the video. And I'll also put a link to the uh, page in the description below. And I'll also put a copy of the discount code in the video description as well. It will get you 10% off any purchase uh, on the website. Right, so we've got the Zigbee water leak sensor. Now you can buy this um, with just the sensor itself or with the actual um, detection cable as well. So in this version, you can see I've got the sensor and the detection cable as well. So for around $15, um, you get both. And for around $10, you just get the sensor itself. So what is the kind of difference? Well, if you look here, the sensor itself has just got two kind of um, prongs coming out of it or drip detention, detection sensors. Um, you can see the water on here uh, piled up. So that would obviously detect um, a leak. Now you can obviously put it that way up if you want to, or in this graphic here, underneath the radiator, they've actually got it facing down. So you're actually sensing any water that's kind of pooled on the floor as well. So it depends which way you want to do it. Now, the cable that comes inside it, um, is extendable which is great um, because what you can then do is the cable itself even though it's kind of usb it's got detectors in it so you can extend the area of the leak detection so in this picture all the way around the washing machine or maybe under your underneath your dishwasher or underneath your kitchen sink or wherever you want to detect uh, water leakage and then you can buy optional um, extension cables and you can buy them on this uh, on the website as well at uh, Sonos uh, Sonos Sonoff's um, website itead.cc and the the water leak detection cables are in here priced extra at seven dollars ninety cents US dollars uh, each so you can add those to your basket if you want to extend um, the amount of coverage um, around a certain object although the cable length you get is quite long anyway if you buy the normal cable inside um, with the water leak sensor so what else do we know about them well they're gold plated so for enhanced corrosion resistance and we also know that the uh, battery life is around five years um, so it's a large battery in these so you can literally just set it leave it and hopefully forget it for quite a long time and hopefully you won't get a leak. It'll just be dusty probably when you come back to it and change the battery in five or more years. So it's a minimum of kind of five years. Um, and then you can get uh, various notifications through the eWe Link app. You will need a Zigbee hub for this unless you're using Home Assistant and some other dongle, etc. cetera. Um, so you could notify yourself with push notifications, um, uh, hub sound alarms, email notifications, you name it. Um, anything is really possible um, so yeah so we've got the zigbee hub um, compatibility between the smart things hub v3 as well and the other sonoff hubs as well and obviously what i'll go into later on is that it's supported by home assistant so we'll look at it within zigbee to mqtt as well which is what i use although you can use zha as well and then you can set up loads of different automations and things like that for it as well but let's get it unboxed now shall we so we've got the water leak sensor it's quite a small packet really that it came in i'd be even smaller if you just bought the sensor itself so shoved up one end we've got the very small kind of instruction manual although that should be online if you want to read that all right that is the box empty So inside the packet, we have got the two prongs with a little pool on the top. 
else. There's nothing else on here. It's encased because it's supposed to be waterproof. We've got a close and open on the base here. So if I swivel that and unscrew it, yeah, it unscrews. And then what we've got is we've got the tab for the battery. Uh, and then you can replace the battery under here. And then you've got the reset kind of switch or the uh, button in order to pair it with your Zigbee dongle or with a uh, home assistant, etc. So you will need to unscrew that underneath. That just goes back like that. Right, so this box must be where the cable is. So we've got a few uh, sort of sticky cable clips here. There's three in the packet. Then we've got the long water detection cable. So it's USB-C at one end, and the reason for that is to connect to another one. But it's quite a fluffy, long cable. There's quite a lot of cable here. You can see the USB-C end is in here. And this part, I've got the two prongs on the back, sort of female parts, which marry up. It's magnetic as well, so it should go on. Uh, pretty easily it's not flush completely it rocks a little bit on here but that's how you set it up and then this cable will detect the leak for you uh, wherever you put it so there's not much else to say about it to be honest um, what we're going to do now is we'll set it up in the uh, app in the ewe link app and then we'll uh, test it and then we'll take it off the WeLink app and we'll put it into Home Assistant and have a look at the entities and the attributes. Let's see what it will kind of read for us. And uh, that'll do. So let's have a look at that. OK, so I am in the WeLink app. And I've got the Sonoff bridge, the Zigbee bridge installed. So I'm just going to go into that. You can see here, I've got one thing added to it already. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to unscrew the back of this. Pull out the battery tab. Okay, we've got a little red light. You can see that. It looks white on there, but it's red. Going to do add. See if it can find it. I'm just going to hold down the button. Yeah, so it's found it. And Alexa has found it as well. So I'm just going to do next. Bottom back on. Screw that on. Nice and tight. And here we have our water sensor. So the battery is high, as we'd expect, because we just used it. Status is normal. Uh, I've got a history record here. Normal coming in through with the dates. We can clear that as well. We can go over to the settings. Current version is 101 at the moment. The RSSI is 53. So that's quite good. Obviously, it's right next to the Zigbee hub at the moment, so it would be fine anyway. And the smart scenes that we can set up and push notifications as well. 
uh, but at the moment there's not much else in there to do so what we'll do is we'll set up push notifications say Alexa has found it as well uh, so we can set up announcements in that as well and it's set to enabled so now it's in let's give it a test and let's give it some water right so I've taken the extension uh, detection part off of uh, sensor and I've got some water here in a syringe so I'm just going to see if it detects it on the uh, app I've set up a little notification as well uh, just to uh, trigger uh, a notification through the app on my phone if it detects anything so here we go oh yeah we have now got there's a fair few drips of water on it and we've got a notification on the phone of drippage in the middle graphic there and we've got a notification as well at the top great so that works if i dry this off then we go back to normal now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add the extension on the top there you go it's magnetic so it's easy to do and if we just get a piece of this cabling i'm just going to drip some more water on it oh there we go it's got a leak sensor again so that seems to work quite well now comes the problem of drying off the braided kind of cable in order to get that dry again so you would have to put that somewhere warm to dry that out really if I take the top off then obviously it's not going to detect it anymore put it back on it will still detect it Right, so I'm now in Home Assistant. I've come to Zigbee to MQTT. I'm just going to permit join all on here. So it's now allowing all devices to join. And then I'm going to just hold down the button on the bottom on the inside of the sensor for a few seconds. There we go. It's found it. If I scroll down at the bottom, it's just finding the device. It says it's now been paired. And we've got the graphic for the item. If I click into it, it says it's supported. Um, the availability is disabled. It's got the version number of the firmware and a few details about it. I'm just going to put the bottom back on the sensor. So we've got the battery percentage, whether there's a water leak or not, uh, whether it's battery low and the signal strength as well. So in the States, uh, we've got, I've renamed it water sensor. We've got the battery um, value as well if it's low we've got the water battery um, sort of measurement percentage and then we've got whether it's uh, a water leak or not so i'm just going to do the same thing with the syringe and you can see now that the water leak sensor has turned to on because i've dripped some water on the top so that works quite well i'm just going to dry it off now it's gone to off so that seems to work okay obviously within home assistant you could set up any kind of automations or graphics uh, or alerts to show that there was a water leak uh, on the sensor so to sum up then the uh, water leak sensor seems to be pretty good um, it seems to trigger quite well um, there was quite a few 
drops I had to put on it for it to trigger. So if it's a very, very minute leak, I don't think it will kind of trigger. Um, but most leaks are either kind of nothing or a lot, aren't they? Uh, or they kind of add up and would be triggered. So I don't think that's really an issue, especially if you use the kind of braided cable, which would kind of soak up the water. Uh, I do like the idea that you can add uh, more and more uh, cables to it for a bigger area. By the way, the length of the cable uh, was one meter 90 of pure cable. So they probably class it as like a two meter length of uh, cable. So that's quite long to actually use on the sensor. Yeah, so it's pretty good. Uh, don't forget if you want to order yours, don't forget to go to the website and get your 10% off discount code, which I've put in the video description below. Uh, overall, thanks for watching. Please like and comment if you want to, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber. See you soon.